Right here, you're looking at the top side of some pulverized coal burning steam boilers, AKA steam generators or coal furnaces. These ones were manufactured by Foster Wheeler Incorporated and were first fired up in 1960. Today, we're gonna to take a look inside at the General Electric steam turbines they used to power and climb down inside the exhaust side of one. They're laying on their side since this place is being demolished. but they look to be about eight stories tall, give or take a couple. And on this nice side cutaway, you can see all the complex steel pipe work for exchanging heat. Water would flow through these tubes in several stages until it was superheated into high pressure steam. I'm not sure if the camera does it justice, but being able to look inside of a combustion chamber where pipes endured a fiery blaze for many, many years is pretty darn amazing. And this animation I found online gives you a spectacular view of what the inside would look like while operating a truly impressive firebox. If you look at it, all these pipes are actually suspended by some spring looking like devices on the top, like that section right there you see. I suppose they aren't springs, but some kind of dampening system for holding up all that weight. As I walk through here, you can see remnants of the coal pulverizing balls kind of all over the place. Here's another little one. And I guess these steel balls are just gonna get mashed back into the earth. There's another one right there. And there, and there, and there. <laughs> all right, as I make my way in here, please bear in mind, this type of equipment's usually surrounded by asbestos insulation and everything I'm doing here is dangerous. I'll be wearing a respirator, hard hat, and being ultra cautious. What I'm really trying to say is don't do this at home. Now, during high electricity demand periods, this place burned around 200 tons of coal per hour with its peak output of 653 megawatts. And as we make our way up the steps, here we are. One of the General Electric turbines that was once used to generate power for the grid and produce reliable coal energy for over 57 years. Of course, these could have been rebuilt at some point. Okay, I'm no expert, but let's go over some basic information before I try to climb down in this. The first steam turbine was invented in 1884, and they're so efficient at converting thermal energy into mechanical energy that over 100 years later, they still make up for about 85% of our power generation in the States. Of course, coal-fired plants are being phased out, but you can generate steam with natural gas, fuel oil, nuclear, and you know several other methods. The principle stays the same. Superheat water into steam, use the steam to turn the turbine, which is then coupled to a generator, and you can see that's right down here. Clearly this is all being cut open. And right here would be the generator coupling shaft, which looks to be mostly burned through right there. Then you can see a bunch of the massive windings and the armature is very long, goes all the way down here to the outside. I would assume that the power leads probably exit down below. You would think they'd maybe come right off the top, but obviously that power has to be processed. And this is the end side of the shaft right here. As far as operation goes, larger commercial units like this are usually multi-stage like this one. And right here is the high pressure side. Steam would come up these massively thick pipes right here and enter the top side of the turbine. Turbine, turbine, whatever you want to call it. You can see these flanges, these are like 10 inches thick on each side. And then up top, I'd have to assume those are probably overpressure safety blow off valves in case you wouldn't want to blow this thing up if too much steam pressure was coming in. Once the steam passes through this unit, it's usually sent back to the boiler, reheated, and then sent over to the intermediate and low pressure sections. Looks like it probably comes in this bottom trunk, spins the intermediate section right here, and then comes out over and is distributed to the low pressure section, which is what we're gonna go inside of today. You can see where the steam enters. The fan blades are very small in the initial, and then as you move down, they get bigger, like that one right there. There's several different fan blades in there, or whatever they're called, turbine blades. And then on the exhaust side, that has the most impressive and fast spinning, well, highest rate of speed, I would say, on the outside of it, uh, turbine blade. Absolutely gorgeous. As we make our way over to the other two units here, you can see the control station centrally mounted. And when these units are online, aka producing power, they're controlled by an automated governor, which varies the steam flow depending on power grid load uh, placed on the generator heads at the end. 
it's crucial for them to maintain a very steady RPM since that directly affects the Hertz output of the generators. Senior Operations Supervisor. Quality made the USA way. Too bad things aren't built like that no more. And here's just a quick little peek of the control room. It's actually collapsing in on the other side because it's right near the, the demolition, right near the boilers. But here's for units one and two. And you can see this whole room is lined with uh, lights, something out of like the China Syndrome, indicator lights, probably a lot of them emergency lights. And then here's for generators, uh, units three and four, I would assume. All right, well, I said I would go inside of this thing, so here, we, here goes nothing. Uh, this is extremely dangerous. Don't do what I'm doing here. And, uh, you know, as they're demolishing this, I'm going to be extremely cautious about things that could potentially fall on my head. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's make our way down here. All right, we're about midway down, I'd say. Let's uh, keep moving. I can't really tell you much of what any of this stuff is, honestly. This, uh, this over here, this is a heat exchanger. It looks like copper tubing. And this is probably to condense. I think this is a condenser here. This condenses the steam back to water and they probably use the thermal energy uh, transferred from this for reheating other steam throughout the plant. You can see as you look around, they're really just cutting this whole thing apart. I'm glad I, I don't, again, I'm glad I don't have a job where I have to work in a, a space like this. I don't think I'd, I'd love that, but it's definitely cool to, to hop in here and check this kind of thing out. Obviously, you can see I'm stepping on pipes that are cut, but <laughs> this stuff's pretty, pretty darn sturdy. So, let's uh, get down here. You can see all the piping in here. I don't know if you, how well you can see it, but it's all severely corroded on the top. And then the bottoms have no corrosion at all, like right here. And here's the bottom side of those condenser tubes. I don't know if you could tell the colors, but oh, they look absolutely beautiful in person here. I'd have to guess that uh, this drain right here that has a screen covering it, this is where the condensed water goes to re return uh, for reheating or anything else. Any experts want to comment and let me know though, that'd be cool. Definitely appreciate that. But you see they have a hole cut through the bottom of this whole thing and nice little exit port. So I've had plenty of airflow in here. You can really kind of feel the draft coming up. These huge trunks right here actually flow into that heat exchanger uh, over there. I don't know if you can see that. Now, I'm wondering, maybe they actually used river water to condense the steam back down. It would seem like a huge waste, though. And by the way, it's absolutely pitch dark down here once you turn the lights out. So <laughs> it's just me, hopefully, right? right? Here's the other side. And uh, boom. One more of those because you got set of four of these. Uh, so I'll go back the other way, find the stairs. Okay, so these here are the generator oil storage tanks. They've already been cleaned out. And that's what the inside of those look like. Definitely not going in there. <laughs> All right, let's get, uh, get back upstairs. Now, I said that the steam usually gets reheated after the high pressure side, but that is actually the bottom of the high pressure side. And then you can see it goes over and back up into the intermediate pressure or low pressure side. So I, I don't think that goes back for reheating based on what I'm seeing right here. Just a multi-stage straight flow through. And here's one more look at some of the steam management piping from a different angle. And uh, this is about midway level, so I'm heading back up. I love these stairs and railings. These are really, really nice. Riveted together on the bottom too. Love it. Anyway, well, it's getting dark and uh, I'd say it's time to, to boogie on out of here. I gotta say, being able to climb a few stories down in there 
even though I didn't get paid for it. That was, uh, that was really neat for me. I love, love that kind of thing. If you watch the video this far, you got problems like me, but I just can't resist, especially when something's in a demolition phase. I mean, look at this. You can see this thing had a repair done at some point, looks like. And I mean, just look at these darn flanges. But once everything's all ripped open and cut open, you can really get a close up of how things work and operate. And I could just, I just, I sit here for hours actually looking at all the devices and mechanisms. And I should probably get a job doing something like this one day. But I don't know. It's, it's neat to just come in here and check it all out. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, you got something out of it or it was entertaining. Again, I know this is extremely dangerous and especially being here by yourself. Hey, look, check out that. There's one of the, uh, one of the bolts that hold that thing together. Oh man, imagine that falling down, hitting you in the head. Holy smokes, that'll take you out. I remember when I was younger, I would see all the barges of coal come up this river and be offloaded right here. Such a neat thing to see.